he has to think how DMP works as a mechanistic factor of creating oxidative stress with uncoupling. It's very well likely that you're going to have the, the kidneys take that brunt as well as, you know, muscle protein breakdown with something like DMP, unless you're using something to slow down or improve nitrogen retention, like being on cycle. Yeah, it's very well understandable to see someone's creatinine go sky high with DMP. You're basically cooking cells from the inside out. Did you ever, did you guys ever see a correlation between training intensity, training volume, training frequency and creatinine levels? Yeah. Because I have. Yeah. Yeah. Kurt, for sure. Enlighten us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just break down, right? Just break down down protein. I mean, it's pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. And generally, if you tell guys to not train so hard for a couple of days before labs, it usually goes back down. Mm -hmm. I've seen, I forgot about this. I saw a former client, his creatinine got over two from DMP. Did you do labs and you run DMP? I did DMP once and I didn't run labs. Okay. I was just curious if you saw the same thing. I don't have a ton no. of experience with DMP. I was in Holland, so you can only do labs once a year. We didn't have okay. private clinics. So I would be, uh, you know, like on TRT dose or, or off, off everything okay. when I did labs. But like most of my experimentation with labs was here in Thailand because I could just run it every month yeah. if I want to. You know, Dude, Have you seen it with DMP? I'm not personally, no, but I can I can understand why it may, may occur. I mean... Mm-hmm. You have to think how DMP works as a mechanistic factor of creating oxidative stress with uncoupling. If you're creating oxidative stress in the body, like what we talked at the very beginning with something like DMP, where it's unhinged oxidative stress, it's very well likely that you're going to have the the kidneys take that brunt as well Mm -hmm. as, you know, muscle protein breakdown. With something like DMP, unless you're using something to slow down or improve nitrogen retention, like being on cycle mm-hmm. and uh, having an appropriate diet set up with obviously right. that excessive lipolysis and free fatty acid oxidation with the uncoupling. Yeah, it's very well understandable to see someone's creatinine go sky high with DMP. Yeah. Especially if you're co- you're co- you're basically cooking cells from the yeah. inside out. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't advise him to take DMP. I didn't find out till he went to the hospital that he was using DMP. Oh God! Uh, on the, the opposite direction, though, I never saw kidney function go down with boldenone with myself. So no, I've never seen that. Me neither. I see hematocrit go up. Yep, uh, and performance goes up, but I've never seen creatinine levels. So yeah, w- when I recommend boldenone, I mean, in my recommendations would always be antioxidants. You know, I've, I've done that before. I knew about the oxidative stress from boldenone because I feel antioxidants are important, you know, otherwise you just look like an old man yeah. after a while. <laughs> so and what, and just and, oxidate your skin. Um, and figuring out the ratio between test and EQ, right? So you're not running it at a, a weird amount, right? Exactly. So you keep your estrogen nicely at the top of the reference range or slightly over. Um, so no, the, 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 the kidney uh, issues from boldenone is in the scientific evidence, but anecdotally for the bodybuilders who bodybuilt, who know how to do this properly and stay healthy, no issues. I've seen it with DMP, you know, other people, obviously, and then other drugs worsening kidney functions or, or uncontrolled blood pressure, where you just, you know, see creatinine or rhabdomyolysis, uh, which also happens sometimes, but that's usually in the endurance athletes where they're like, ah, I'm going to run a marathon and then they don't, you know, consume adequate carbohydrates and then they get wrapped in myelitis and then their CPK is like 25,000 and creatinine is four and, you know, shaking, shivering in the hospital. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and then they, they, they come back from that also, you know, this is the hydration for three days, four days, and it's, it's perfectly fine again. My, yeah. my record with CK looking on blood work is 12,000 and a, Oh shit! A world's stro- world strongest man athlete. So wow. someone's yet to, someone's yet to beat that record. But That's everything was everything was per- creatinine was perfect. So statin C was perfect. So it shows you <laughs> the, oh, the wow, training yeah. intensity that these guys train at is twelve thousand oh. un- un- unhuman. Yeah, I think and the highest I ever got it was three thousand five hundred, five thousand something yeah. like that. Yeah. 
And Gotta train harder. What you were saying before about labs and kidney function, my I have scans done on mine. That's why I know there's an improvement. We're not just going by markers in the blood, like you're saying. Uh, no. Yeah, it's important to do the scans. You know, it's cumbersome and annoying, and you have to go through the doctor and explain why that you want to be preventative. But uh, I think it's important to do every six months, mm -hmm. or depending on how hard you're source sourcing, or at least once a year. Uh, of course, if you're on TRT, you're managing your blood pressure, you know, once every five years, fine. I, but if you're like, for me, I, I, I use drugs to experiment and make videos about. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I go in the hospital all the time just to make sure that I'm okay and that I don't need to pull the plug uh, or that I need to pull the plug because the experiment is a little bit too crazy for my liking, you know? Um, so I, I do it frequently just to stay on top of my health. But so far, knock on wood, uh, besides that spout, bout with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which was food-induced, not drug-induced, <laughs> You know, prevented from taking drugs, obviously, because of the stem cells in the liver. Um, but yeah, I was able to resolve that as well. Um, so I, I do notice that with training intensity, sometimes that back in the day, you get clients and they really like their drop sets and high intensity, right? They're hours in the gym mm -hmm. and you see that the creatinine and the CPK is really high. And then you bring them down to, a, you know, maybe a more uh, frequency, higher intensity with low volume approach. And then these the CPK and the and the creatinine goes down and they actually start growing because there's a lot less muscle breakdown instead of doing these crazy triple drop sets uh, and they're like oh I'm finally growing and my kidney markers are improving yeah. so well, you're you're not burning yourself away from the inside out yeah so all these little things you know can contribute as well and that's that's why I think that some of the bigger guys that train that way and have a high protein or a high carbohydrate diet which also acts protein sparing obviously because it's it's an energy source more readily available than, than protein. So you have less muscle protein breakdown. I think their creatinine levels are actually quite okay because uh, they train optimally and they eat optimally. And there's very low breakdown of protein. And that's represented in the serum creatinine and creatine phosphokinase. Mm -hmm. Yep. I drink yeah. carbs while I lift too, to prevent. Oh, that. really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think one of the reasons why my creatinine levels are a little bit higher is because due to a ketogenic diet... Yeah. I'm always on a high protein diet mm -hmm. and I don't do inter-workout carbs um, yep. because that brings me out of ketosis. I have post-workout carbs, 70 grams yeah, from fine. fruits, but it's not much or 150 in this case, but most of the time it's 70. And, you mean you're uh, not doing the fruit diet? We don't with No, that? no, no. I tried that. I was kidding. And then, and then, and then my, my insulin levels were all over the place. It was fun though. It's fun to eat a lot of candy. I felt like a little boy. I felt like a teenager. <laughs> I felt like Halloween every day. <laughs> Man, what a, what, a, I, what a fun two months it was. No, nobody does it now. That went away quickly. Do we ruin yeah. that for everyone? Yeah. It's like uh, <laughs> one of those fad diets. I, I tried it though. I, I you know, Me and Chase, we tried it. Chase came off of it after a couple of weeks. I think Mark Bell stopped. I stopped after four days. Um, it was fun while it lasted, man. 